Power Project family, the Power Sandal is back in stock. You guys helped us sell out of these last year and we got them back, even up to size 14 for you people with really big feet. The German leather top, Vibram sole, lacing system so it stays stuck on your foot. You can lift in these, you can run in these. They're extremely comfortable and my first pair is still going. So if you want to get a pair, go to powerproject.live. Part two in search of one. <laughs> I, I miss the, uh, the old school... Uh, like movie intros <clears throat> where they had that one guy with that one voice. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need that guy for our show to do the intros. Mm -hmm. Like the guy who does like the scream, like the movie scream. Does yeah. Like the, uh, what the fuck is that called? Trailer. The trailer <laughs> voice yeah. guy. Yeah. Or like the, uh, the action hero, like one man yeah. on one mission. <laughs> <laughs> From the makers of the Mortal Kombat movie. Yes. And you're like, I don't like the Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even any good. Or it's also like the, I don't know, the, the screenplay director, right. sub-director of, of yeah. the Titanic. It's like, dude, he didn't fucking work on this movie. Like, no, he did. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he says in that voice, he's got your attention. I wonder if that guy's on, um, what's uh, Martin's thing? Um uh, oh, a cameo? Cameo. I wonder if he's on cameo. Oh, that would be great. Just hire him there. It'll be so much easier. <laughs> yeah, have him say happy birthday to you or something. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. That'd be sick. All but, right. So uh, I guess you said people liked part one of uh, our nutrition thingy yeah, that we did for yeah. Sunday school. Saturday yeah. school. Saturday school, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we can't do Sunday school. Got my days all mixed up. It's okay. But no, yeah, we got some really good feedback. Um, we got some... Pretty good follow-up questions, but yeah, thank you everybody for checking out that episode and leaving those comments, and then for all of you that hit that like button. But yeah, people were digging it because um, one of the comments was just saying that like, yeah, it's great advice for athletes mm. and stuff, but it's good advice for all people, you know, and that's kind of where I was hoping it would end up. But um, yeah, no, it's just because <laughs> we can muddy things up way too yeah. much. We can get can way be. too far into the weeds and it's like, hey, just eat whole food. And you'll be pretty much, you know, in the clear after that. I think, you know, a good way to look at your food, um, you know, this this uh, part two is going to focus a little bit more on losing body weight, losing body fat in particular, which can sometimes be difficult to really hone in and just only lose fat. But that's what we'll talk about for today. Uh, I do think it's important that people look at their food as as their food is costing them time. So if you, you know, next time you scoop out some ice cream for yourself, um, think about it as like, it's going to cost you some time. It's cost you some time. It's costing you it, and time is money. You know, don't forget time is money, but it's costing you time in the way of like the more scoops that you take, mm -hmm. maybe the more exercise that you might need to burn it off. Now also too, you can have, uh, ice cream and potato chips and some of these things, they can be part of a healthy diet. It's just, they get to be really difficult to put into a healthy diet, especially if you struggled with your diet in the past and have had a hard time learning when to stop. And we know that these foods that have carbohydrates and fats in particular, they, they, they have carbohydrates and fats, and then they usually have some component of salt. So you got saltiness and sweetness going on together, which is fucking awesome. And then to get that mouth feel and get that real pleasure, we got mm -hmm. some fat calories in there as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So we have things like pizza and cookies and ice cream. Even something like whole fat milk is pretty damn enjoyable. Um, add more sugar to it. Add some chocolate syrup to it. <laughs> like we're having like a real party. So these things, they can be part of a healthy diet, but for myself personally, I, I choose not to eat the eat those things very often. They still are around. I'll still eat stuff like that. I'll have uh, tortilla chips every once in a while. Um, I don't know. I'll eat like just ice cream, like ice cream. Actually, I'll probably have ice cream. I, I've always liked ice cream a lot. I'll probably have ice cream maybe about two times a month. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not every day and it's not necessarily every week. Uh, there could be a, a time where I have a thing of ice cream in the freezer and for some reason no one else is really hitting it up and I might hit it up like three or four days in a row. Mm -hmm. I just don't really sweat it, but my interpretation, the way I look at things now is so different than the way I used to look at things. Now I just look at it as, 
okay, this is like, this has some carbohydrates and some fats. Uh, let's get the smaller bowl. Let's get the smaller bowl. Mark, grab the smaller bowl. No, not that bowl. Grab the smaller, the smaller bowl. You know, there's a smaller bowl there. Grab that one and don't overfill it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't stack it up. Yeah. Don't stack it up. Like this is going to taste really good. And no matter how much you have of it, you're still going to want more anyway. Kind of like pussy. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. I mean, you'll be satisfied. But, but once like, you recover. Yeah. Once yeah. you recover. Then it's then you're like, hey, that was fun. We should do that again. Yeah, and again and again <laughs> and again and again. It doesn't take that long, you know. And food food wise, it takes like the amount of time that you sat down and and ate it. You're like, I should get up and get mm-hmm. some more, right? Yeah. So it's just it gets to be really hard to control those things. Mm-hmm. So then, all right, you just said that <clears throat> you have ice cream roughly about two times a month. Um, not that you're keeping track of it, so you know we'll just go with that. Um, not, not saying that you're lying or anything, but I, I think, I don't want people to be like, okay, I can have ice cream two times a month now and that's it. It's like, Mm -hmm. no, but, um, how would you incorporate something like, you know, you said chips, Mm -hmm. ice cream, cause you know, I, I I know for myself, like I was offered pizza over the weekend and, and the, 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 um, the offer was posed as, Hey, I don't know if you're on a diet right now, but you know, there's pizza there if you want some. And I'm like, I'm not really on a diet, but no thank you. Because I just knew in my head, I'm like, if I eat that now, it's going to disrupt my stomach mm. and I'm going to pay for it later. It's like, so a little bit of pleasure right now I'm going to pay for later. So mm. I just said no, and it was no big deal. But like, how would you incorporate <clears throat> some of these funner foods while still staying on track? That's a great, you know, really well said on your part. And I think the reason why you chose not to do it is probably jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because you're like, uh, you know, they fold me up pretty good in <laughs> practice. And I don't want to be farting all over everybody. Oh, dude, somebody ripped one this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's one thing to have a little pop here and there where not everyone's quite sure what happened, but to have one of those real sloppy ones. Dude, it was a blowout. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> my, my, one, of my, one of my boys looked up and he's just like, bro. And we just all started laughing. I'm like, oh, I was like, I hope that never happens. You got to stop the practice. You got to clean the mats. I mean, it's a... Uh, you know, and the guys, you want the guy, they put you on probation for a couple of weeks, right? They're like, hey, man, just, like, just it, now, it's cool, but don't come back for like a week. Yeah. And then when you come back, the professor announces it, hey, no neon belly for farty pants over here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. You have to douse me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Shouldn't have had that pizza. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do think that, um, you know, occupying yourself is another great way to, uh, to assist you with burnt, with losing body fat. Mm-hmm. So occupying your time. And as I was mentioning, uh, the food costing you time, you can kind of look at this ice cream it is going to cost me time via like, I may have to do some cardio or I might have to do an extra training session this week. You can also kind of view it as it's going to slow me down. Like this food that I'm going to have right now could potentially bother me when I go for my run tomorrow morning or could potentially bother me you know, for me, if I eat a bunch of disastrous stuff like late at night, I need to run the next day and I don't have time to like poop like three or four mm-hmm. times before I leave the house. And I certainly don't want to have to do that when I'm running. Mm-hmm. And so I think uh, having activity, I think would be like place number one where I would start is if you have activities and within that activity, you start to have a goal um, that will assist you with making, I think over time, I don't think this is like a, something that's going to like cure you of really much of anything, but over time, you're going to start to say, I don't really need that. The risk to reward isn't great. I don't like the way I feel the next day. I don't like the way I feel a little while later. So I'm not going to do that. But a good way to incorporate these things is, again, in modest amounts, it shouldn't really bother you that much. Now, if you're like lactose intolerant or something, mm-hmm. now you, there's other things to consider and you might have to purchase products that don't have lactose in them, or you might have to figure out some ways around some of these things. But I think, uh, the main, the main thing is you can incorporate a lot of these foods, but like, what's going to work best for you? Like, are you going to be able to incorporate, um, eating something that triggers you or sends you into a different realm kind of early in the day, midday, and then be able to get back on track with your diet? If that's the case and you are able to get back on track with your diet, you're able to get back to kind of whole foods and stuff like that, 
then I don't see anything wrong with, you know, at lunchtime, you know, you, I don't know, you ate a burrito and you had a little bit of ice cream, you had an ice cream cone with it or something like that. Like, I don't see a problem with it, but it, it's just from what I've seen, it's less common for people to be able to do that. And then to be able to like make it through the rest of the day to go home and eat their steak or their chicken breast and things like that. Usually once somebody, uh, once somebody already's made like an error, you know, and they kind of, it's hard not to view ice cream as bad. It's hard not to view pizza mm -hmm. as bad. They're not necessarily bad, but I think you end up with a case of the fuckets. You know, you already slashed one tire and you're like, mm -hmm. I might as well slash all of them, which doesn't make any sense. Mm -mm. Again, it's just going to cost you more. It's going to cost you more and take you more time. So I think uh, ways you can incorporate these things is to try, try to just proceed with caution and to sometimes it's not bad to just go old school and go cheat meal. You know, have have a day where you have not a, not a cheat day. A cheat day mm -hmm. is gonna that's gonna cost you too much mm -hmm. in, in most cases, unless you're some extreme bodybuilder or runner or something like that. You might be able to get away with a cheat day. A cheat meal is not a bad idea, and it's what I use to get in the best shape of my life. That's Honey Rombod had me utilize um, uh, a cheat meal about every other week or so. And then it got dialed back a pinch uh, as the contest came closer. So for a bodybuilding <clears throat> show, I got completely shredded. Now, I was on a lot of PEDs and a lot of other things going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, back to what I said about time, that cost me a lot of time. That took 90 minutes every day. I had to do 90 minutes of cardio every day, along with a lifting session that was 90 minutes. So looking back on it, you know, if I could have communicated with Hani and said, hey, um, can I like just not have the cheat meal, the cheat. Cause it wasn't really necessarily only confined to one meal. And that's the other problem is that we know it's not going to be confined mm -hmm. to one meal, but it would be like a meal and then like a dessert, you know? So it, it would be just whatever my little heart desired. And then it would be like some cookies or something like that. And every once in a while I did okay with it, but mm -hmm. it was still tough to manage. Yeah. yeah. I got pretty shredded right there. I'm really proud of that because you know, I don't have a bodybuilding background, although I've been lifting for many years and obviously I've been incorporating some bodybuilding uh, movements and stuff like that. But um, that that was that was like the best I could do, you know, like I and that's that's what makes me proud about it is not necessarily uh, the look and not necessarily anything other than the fact that like. And it was only it was short, you know, it was like nine weeks, mm -hmm. it's like nine weeks. I just put everything into it that I could. Yeah, that was a fun time. I had a lot of fun training with you during that time. That was sick. I'm having a lot of fun right now training with Kenny. Oh, dude, I bet. Mr. Anabolic Activities. Yeah. We got after it today and did a bunch of a bunch of chest and triceps today. It was really good. Uh, the best kind. Uh, uh, man, I'm getting sore during these workouts. <laughs> uh, what, what are the rep sets looking like right now? Mm. That's an interesting question because we actually... We're starting a podcast for mm -hmm. anabolic activities, <laughs> as you know, Andrew. <laughs> and uh, I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to do well. Um, they have a YouTube channel called Anabolic Activities. Uh, they have an Instagram. And uh, that was actually the question from Kenny at the end mm -hmm. uh, that we, hopefully that it will be our first podcast or second podcast. Because uh, the first podcast is like an intro into like, why the fuck mm -hmm. is he filming stuff when he's 21 years old and only did one bodybuilding show? Mm -hmm. Um but uh, we talked about, you know, sets and reps and going to failure versus um, versus lower repetitions and things like that. And the conclusion we came to and the conclusion we've kind of talked about for a long time is why not incorporate a little bit of both? Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun. So in our training today, we worked up to some sets of six kind of heavy on the bench. Um, but we also got a pump before we benched, which made the benching really hard. We did like six sets of cable crossovers. So by the time, and, and Kenny's used to training that way. So when we got to the bench, he killed me. He just sort of annihilated me. And I'm not saying he wouldn't annihilate me anyway. He might, uh, no matter no matter what the situation is. But, you know, going in with that pre-fatigued, uh, pre-fatigue is a little different. So we use a wide variety of reps and sets. And what I've been talking to him about is I said, hey, listen, and this is good advice, I think, for anybody listening, because it's something I've learned over the course of 30 years when something feels good, you ride that fucker out. Like stay with that. What's the exercise that you're doing? 
if it feels really good, you got the right pump and the weights are right and the mm -hmm. elbow sleeves or whatever the fuck it is, whatever arrangement you got, the music, all these things are like all set and it just feels good. Don't just stop because you did three sets. Don't just stop because you did four or five sets. Stop when you're like, okay, <laughs> you know, I, I had enough. And you'd be surprised sometimes. You might do six or seven sets of something, but there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to understand that that's going to come out of some of the other exercises that you're doing. Because again, we don't want to overdo it. There's no reason to do seven sets of uh, tricep extensions on the floor and smash yourself with that and then go do a ton more of tricep. Like there's no reason to do a lot of different exercises mm -hmm. at that point because you exhausted everything you needed to on the exercise that felt really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't wait to talk more about training on a on a future episode because I, I did have, I, I saw, we remember we reacted to that dude with the uh, like the the robe on oh uh, yeah hamza mm -hmm. yeah he had a, a pretty cool take on you know we we we, we say like oh dude I, I went that was a 10 out of 10 i went to failure mm. he's like but now imagine you're gonna do one set for chest right like you're just gonna grab dumbbells and you're gonna do one set and that's it he's like you're probably gonna be like holy shit dude i got i got to 20 it's like can you you probably got more. Okay, I'm at 21, 22. Mm -hmm. He's like, then you'll probably get to 23 and you'll be right. like, completely done. You'll throw them down and then you'll be like, I probably had one more. <laughs> you know, like maybe that wasn't 10 out of 10, just so you can find, you know, that range. Cause mm -hmm. yeah, some people will see the program, will say, oh, I got three sets and then I'm going to move on, but it'll feel really good. But then they'll completely stop because of the program or because mm -hmm. oh, we're supposed to do this. So they do that. Yeah. And not to get too sidetracked, but mm -hmm. like there's so many different ways to go about doing all that. You know, you can have, if you have a, an appropriate rest interval, like where you're counting on the fatigue of the rest interval to be part of the training. So mm -hmm. if, if you and I are doing, uh, you know, say four sets of 12 reps on an incline dumbbell and you're like, Oh, I have handled seventies and stuff and eighties on, on dumb, you know, incline dumbbell press four for a couple reps. So I, I think, you know, these fifties uh, are going to be fine. Well, if, it, if we're going 90 seconds rest in between sets, you might get to like set two or three and be like, ooh, like I ain't going to make it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you, uh, you end up with, you know, uh, nine reps on set three. And, you know, not that there's anything wrong with like missing a couple reps. There's really nothing wrong with that. But it doesn't get the volume in that you, you were trying to prescribe to. You mm -hmm. know? Um, so real quick, uh, you had mentioned – there's nothing wrong with maybe hitting up Chipotle, getting a burrito, and then, oh, shit, next door, there's a, you know, I, there's, what is it, um, frozen yogurt spot. Mm. Something really like, ah, it's frozen yogurt. It's not as bad as, like, right, right, right. <laughs> whatever. So you have that. The The issue that I would have if I were to do that is I'd go home, and I wouldn't really be interested in the food that I have at home mm, now. Good point. Do you have any recommendations for kind of recovering after that one meal to get back on track for even the, just that day? Like, how, how can we kind of reset our taste buds so that way we can go home and eat the steak and enjoy mm. it? Yeah, I've referred to that before as like protein displacement. You, you ate something else. Uh, you ate a bunch of other things. That's otherwise taking up good real estate mm -hmm. for the protein that you probably should have eaten for the day. You know, I think you just do your best to try to get yourself back on track. Maybe you do something that will stimulate your appetite again. Maybe you go on a walk. Walking is a great stimulant of your appetite if, if you have the option to do something like that. Um, otherwise, you might just have to wait a while. You know, you might have to wait, you know, an extra hour or something like that before you, you get to your food. And also, too, like, I, I think... You know, as I've gotten older, I'm like, I'm just not really that hungry. <laughs> you know, and when I when I was uh, when I was raising my kids, my my son is 19 and my daughter's 15. When I was raising them, you know, I found myself saying stuff that you hear parents say a lot. You know, you gotta finish your food and finish your plate and finish. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop saying that because they they know how their stomach feels way better than I do. I don't know anything about how hungry they are or aren't. And to be honest, I haven't really kept track of every single thing they ate for today. So I'm just going to like, okay, that that's not great. Like they only ate like a little bit of the chicken that we cooked tonight. And maybe they're eating, maybe they're eating a little early and they're kind of quote unquote spoiling their dinner. And so maybe I should keep a better eye on that. And then so for the future, I can kind of think about that more. And I can start to try to employ some methods that allow them to eat more at dinner, um, things like that. But I think if you're not hungry, 
and you're not hungry. It's not it's not a huge deal. Um, maybe just for family sta- sake or the sake of you going out with some people, just order something smaller than you normally would. Um, odds are when the food comes and everybody else starts to eat, you'll be stimulated to eat mm-hmm. again. You'll probably be like, fuck, I should have <clears> got the 12 ounce instead of the eight ounce. <laughs> but I'll also say this. You're almost always better off. I know some of our listeners are like, they want to be big and they want to like grow and stuff like that. But you're almost always better off, especially when you go to a restaurant on getting the smaller thing. I know it's like you want to enjoy the bigger thing and you want to like stuff yourself. Um, But just think about like if you sat down with somebody and uh, you you sit down with somebody for coffee or for... um, or for like a wine, a glass of wine, and the second that it comes, it just poof, they just fucking down it. You'd be like, "Whoa!" You're like, "Yeah, I really like wine," and bam, they down it again. And you're like, "What? Hey, you know, bring one more back." Like, I really love wine. Like, okay, I get it. Like, what the fuck's going on? Had I known, I wouldn't have invited you here. <laughs> Holy. So going for coffee, you know, at like Phil's or something like that, or um, coffee would be harder just because it's so fucking hot, right? Mm-hmm. But you get the idea. Like these are. These are things that are, it's hopefully you're not going out to eat all the time. And when you do go out to eat, it should be something that you're really going to like enjoy something Mm -hmm. that you're really going to like kind of cherish. And so, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're someone that is trying to lose weight, then go with the smaller thing. And you could always eat more when you go home again too. You could always have more protein, but these are the agreements you got to walk yourself through. Hopefully you utilized some of the methods we've talked about many times on the power project before eat before you go to dinner as well. You know, so if you're, if you're on your way somewhere and you're, you're, you're about to go to go eat, you could have like a protein shake or you could have, um, you know, a couple hard boiled eggs or just you cook up some eggs real quick and your wife and your other family members will think you're crazy because they know that you're going out to eat and they're like, what are you doing? But you're really just trying to make sure that you get in the nutrition that you want and that you're set up properly to go out to eat and that you're not going to get overly hungry and end up just like gorging yourself on every single thing uh, that's put on your plate. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some other ways to go about doing all of this. Uh, Your question was, you know, kind of what do you do when you kind of spoiled your food with other with food that maybe is less advantageous? advantageous to losing body fat and losing weight, maybe just fast for a while. So, you know, I've said before, fast in, fast out. You fat, you can fast your way into um, a cheat meal and you can fast your way back out of it. So let's say Andrew and I and Encima, we know that we're going to Camden here in Sacramento, which is an amazing restaurant, has really good food. We all know we're going to like, we're going to eat a lot of calories, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to order a lot of food, a lot of appetizers, probably still be pretty healthy because all of us like to eat meat and mm-hmm. most of the stuff, uh, yeah, most of the stuff, uh, the best stuff at a restaurant is going to be meat. Like that's what mm-hmm. the mo- most expensive stuff is. So we would eat a bunch of that, but maybe in preparation for it, I'd see you guys here and, you know, you guys are like, yeah, man, I, I didn't even eat anything today, I'm going to kind of save it all up for tonight. And those are, those are things you can do, but sometimes that can send you into a little bit of a frenzy too. Mm -hmm. So you have to have conversations with yourself about, you know, how you're going to actually manage this. And maybe you say to yourself, all right, tonight after I go out and I smash all that food, the only thing I'm going to allow myself when I get home, because I might want something sweet, I'm going to allow myself a legendary foods, tasty pastry. And if I'm still hungry, I'll make a fucking protein shake. Uh, if I'm still hungry, I'll drink a fair life 26, uh, protein, uh, protein drink. I don't know if you guys ever tried those, but those are fucking amazing. They're so good <laughs> there. Or, or when I get home, you know, if I want something sweet, I'll eat some fruit. I know it's still not the ice cream. It's not the cake. It's not the, but again, this is somebody that is wanting to lose body fat. Right. So it, it, you are going to have to make compromises. There's going to be stuff that you have to leave behind. Um, but the good news is for body fat management, one of the best things you could ever do is to really try to lean into eating a shit ton of whole foods. And you can use certain foods to your advantage. Like 
for example, a lot of vegetables are kind of free. They don't really have, they're not really rich in macronutrients. They have micronutrients, but they don't really have a calorie cost to them. Protein is something else you can utilize to your advantage. Lean sources of protein. Protein is going to be the least likely out of the three macronutrients to convert to fat. Now, there is there is uh, some evidence that shows that it can convert to fat, but it's like going to be the last one that's mm -hmm. going to do that. <clears throat> I don't want to speak too far out of my range because I don't know the biochemistry of a lot of these things, but it's been my experience that protein... Protein is something that you can keep pretty stagnant. So if you're someone that's 200 pounds and you maybe want to weigh 180, you could eat like 180 grams of protein. And you, that's plenty of protein. That's probably more than enough protein. But protein is something that you can overeat. And it's really rare to see somebody uh, get fat off of that unless the protein is accompanied by other calories, which could be potentially from fat because remember in episode one, we talked about how protein and fats are almost always together, except for when we start to chop things up and have chicken breasts without the skin and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, you mentioned fruit. So I wanted to ask, um, well, I, I really want to get into fasting, but if somebody's not, if, if they're kind of a little intimidated by fasting, you know, so mm -hmm. they eat, they, they think they might need to eat something on the way out to work, they can't imagine skipping lunch because their stomach's growling by like 1030 and lunch is at 12. So like, holy shit, I'm starving. I'm going to go destroy some food. Um, would you recommend some type of snack in between meals to try to like stave off that or like, is that the right word? Stave? I think so. Mm -hmm. Off the actual like big meal. So that way they can kind of get from point A to point B a little bit easier. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that at mm -hmm. all. Because you, you hear that a lot. I mean, we've preached that on the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Meals at meals. Right. And so I I just feel like maybe some people might feel like, well, shit, if I can't have anything that I'm not even going to try. Yeah. Again, I think one of the th one of the key components to something like fasting is you have to be able to pretend that it never happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's really <laughs> difficult because your body keeps score. Your, your body, your brain, your whole existence – is very aware that you're fucking stealing from it, that you're robbing it of these calories that you normally consume every day. You consume them every day for like 30 years and now you're trying to consume less and the body's like, yo, <laughs> this is fucking dumb. Like whatever it is you're doing, this is not a good idea. And so I think we have to, um, you have to figure out ways you can manage your hunger. When we're talking about a diet, the two things that are probably the, Achilles heel of everybody is your hunger and your cravings, your hunger and your cravings. Where does your hunger come from? Where does your cravings come from? Well, they come from fatigue. Sometimes they come from fatigue. They can come from stress. So we need to make sure that we're getting our proper sleep. We need to make sure that we know how much we're going to eat, when we're going to eat and where we're going to eat. You need to know these things every single day. So you would never from this point forward, once you listen to today's podcast, you will no longer leave your house and not have a plan on where and when you're going to eat next. There's no reason to do that. You want to have, even if you're kind of halfway sure that you're going to go somewhere and eat with uh, somebody like a business meeting or something, you know, make sure they have appropriate food for you. That's, you know, uh, on your uh, list of things that fit your diet. If they don't, you could still go there and you don't have to be weird, but you could just eat at work and eat before you get there. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, like one thing about dieting that's not talked about enough is that if you miss a meal and you're trying to have a structured plan, if you miss a meal, it's almost as bad as cheating on your diet, or you can view it as a form of cheating on your diet. We got that from Chris Minnis, who's been on the mm -hmm. Power Project before. He runs some bodybuilding shows. I thought that was really profound when he said that. I was like, I never thought about it that before. But if you skip a meal, again, what's the cost of that? For some people, maybe it doesn't cost them anything. Maybe they're fine. Maybe they're used to a little intermittent fasting and it doesn't bug them at all. But if you fasted and you go home and you start rummaging through the pantry and you start eating a bunch of stuff that you're not supposed to eat, you made a huge mistake. And if you did that the day before and the day, like this is what happens to people mm -hmm. often. 
it happens often. People are like ravenous when they come home from work and they just start clearing out, <laughs> eating anything and everything. I mean, there is a discussion around like, maybe you don't have some of these things in the house and stuff like that. But um, yes, I do think it's a good idea to like, quote unquote, clean out your closet, clean out your pantry, like don't have a bunch of junk in there that's really accessible. But also like there should be able to be some stuff in there every once in a while that you enjoy that's a <clears throat> snack like you shouldn't have to necessarily um get rid of all that and everybody else in the family shouldn't have to necessarily be on your diet just for you to be able to get momentum to lose body weight so it's um th these all these things are hard they're hard it's hard to kind of balance these things out but having like a snack at work bringing some cheese with you bringing an apple an orange um I don't know if people know this, but blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, basically all the berries, they, they're, they don't have a lot of calories in them. Um, Greg Doucette talks a lot about popcorn. A lot of people talk about popcorn. If you buy certain types of popcorn, it's just, it's something that you could cycle through and eat, mm -hmm. which like we get used to from like just going to the movie theater and like watching TV and you kind of feel like you need something that I don't know why, but it's like soothing or relaxing, you know, it's suckling, you know, we're sitting there <laughs> mm -hmm. and we got our, uh, we're pacified, you know, we're sitting there going <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason you want to eat. And there's a bunch of options when it comes to that. I always do uh, Greek yogurt with uh, this is the way vanilla protein mix that together. Sometimes I have that with fruit. Sometimes I just eat it like that, but there's not a lot of, most of the calories in that are coming from protein. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like for, you know, some bro science here, but to me, I'm like, this is, this is uh, good for me. Like this is like an advantage rather than a disadvantage. If I was just sitting there eating ice cream. Paparazzi family, how's it going now? We talk about meat a lot on this podcast, which is why we've partnered with Piedmontese and have for years now, because they have some of the best beef on the planet. All right, Piedmontese beef has cuts that are fattier in terms of their ribeyes, and they have also cuts that are leaner in terms of their flat irons, but you can get cuts for no matter what diet you're on. Andrew, how can they get their hands on it? Yeah, head over to Piedmontese.com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com. -E -E Check out enter promo code POWER for 25% off your entire order. And if your order is $150 or more, you get free two-day shipping. <laughs> Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, Smart Pop Popcorn. I believe the entire bag is only like 240 calories or something like that. So like you can really go to town on it, but also it's a really good source of fiber. Um, that was right. actually where I was getting a majority of my fiber when I was following, you know, that style of diet where it's like more, mm -hmm. more carbs and more protein than low fat, which like I had mentioned in the previous episode, when I went that route, I kind of had to eat more often versus when right. I have more fat and I eat less often. Mm -hmm. But I think what you said about, the um like if i okay i'm committed to fasting i'm not gonna eat all day long whatever that means i'm only gonna eat dinner when i get home but then you get home and you're plowing through mm -hmm. everything in the pantry and you're right it, it's it's just not working at that point so other than that what are some other symptoms of a diet not really working and and again this is for people that want to lose weight so it you know there's going to be some give and take i guess you have to understand but I'm thinking like performance or something like that. Mm. What's another red flag? Like shit, dude, maybe you need to reassess your diet. Uh, overeating is a huge one. Cheating on your diet's another big one. Mm. Feeling tired can sometimes be a result of poor nutrition and then poor performance. Like how well can you perform when you go into the gym? Do you feel tired uh, when you play like a pickup game of basketball? Do you have you know, and you're 35 years old and you've got more energy than the guys that are 20, well, then maybe this, you know, it doesn't pertain to you, but uh, and you, you have things locked in pretty good. But if you find yourself, a question to ask yourself is, why am I reaching for the monster energy like multiple times a day? Um, I, I slept and I had coffee first thing in the morning. And now here I am only a couple hours later reaching for a monster I'm not saying that you should never have those things. I think those things are great and they have, they're, they're good tools. Um, but they're also a mirage. They're also a little bit of a trick. 
they might give you an uh, instant boost. They might give you like a lit instant like pep in your step to do your podcast or to um, go on your run or to do your lift or whatever it was that you were going to do. Um, but what's the impact of that later on? Like, is that going to negatively impact your sleep? Is that going to throw you off later on? Because if it negatively impacts your sleep, now we're in this cycle, this circle of you cheating on your diet, of you not being able to hold up your end of the bargain on the style of diet that you chose. I think for some people, the tough thing is, it seems like for people that have really struggled with their diet, the only thing that seems to work really well is to have like black and white lines. Like I can do this and I can't do that. And that's when we get into, you know, a lot of people say, well, the person said they can't eat pizza, but I want to mm -hmm. tell them like you, you can eat pizza. Like it's okay. You can have some pizza here and there. Well, for some people, they kind of can't because it, it derails them. It throws them off their pattern. They, they had a streak going. They had like a winning streak going. And again, the body keeps score. The body knows like it's your, um, your dopamine, your serotonin, the way you feel about yourself, the way you communicate with other people. Um, a lot of that could be uh, predicated on the way that you felt the day before because you accomplished all the shit that you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You come into the gym on Monday. Someone's like, how's it going? You're like, man, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Like, well, that guy's got a little extra going on. <laughs> well, maybe it's because he did his run on Sunday and he did his lifting. And maybe uh, it's because he followed through on his diet and, you know, he's feeling really good. So I think even though you might have scheduled cheats here and there, again, especially if you're heavy, like being heavy is like a heavy thing to carry around with you, mind, body, spirit. It's, it's a tough thing to live with. Uh, it's one thing to be, you know, 20 pounds overweight. No one really notices. It's one thing to be like 30, 40 pounds overweight. But when you start to be more than that, it starts to get to a point where you can't hide it with a sweatshirt or oversized clothes. It's embarrassing. It doesn't make you feel good. And imagine you're doing well. You're on this diet and you lost a couple of pounds. But now let's say you lost like eight pounds. This kind of happens a lot. You lost like eight pounds. You you had a scheduled cheat day or cheat meal rather. <laughs> and uh, that cheat meal turned into a cheat day. Mm. And now you're almost right back to where you were. If you're a bigger guy, that's pretty common. It sounds like, oh, eight pounds in a day, but your body weight can shift like crazy. If you're 200, 250, your body weight can shift pretty drastically. If you're a smaller person, it won't drift as much. And so there's a mental side of this game that's really, really important. And so I think it's important for people to try to develop how many days in a row can I legitimately do this? Because if I force myself to do it for X amount of days and then I'm so hungry or so starved that I'm off the diet for six months, well, that didn't work either. So you don't even know if a, you don't even know if a diet worked or not until weeks later, months later. And sometimes even years later, because there's people that compete in fitness and will do pretty well during their fitness career, but as soon as they're out of it, or people that have maintained some level of fitness, some level of diet throughout their sporting career, and then it's over and boom, they got like diabetes, they gained a lot of weight. And so we don't even know how healthy these things are until, we don't know how, how healthy these things are until a lot of time goes by sometimes. So you have to try to, I think it's important, and this is why when you listen to The Power Project, you probably think Mark and Andrew and Asim are all crazy. <laughs> well, don't worry, because we thought people that came on our show were crazy. Stan Efforting, like, I don't really touch that stuff. And we were like, what? And we had other people on, uh, uh, Sean Baker and a bunch of mm -hmm. other guys, and we were like, huh? They don't really eat. Like, those guys are, those guys are like one of a kind, really. Mm -hmm. They're more strict than probably anyone can really handle. And, and, but to them, it doesn't even feel strict. It just feels like this is what they do. Um, but for us, I do think we're a little bit more reasonable. We eat some stuff here and there. We eat some things that are a little different and off plan. Um, but it's still way less than most people. And so people think we're crazy. Yeah. I remember Stan Efforting talking about kind of not, he didn't use the word like a cheat meal or a cheat day, but sort of like saying, yeah, I kind of, 
you know, loosened up a little bit and I had strawberries and yeah. we just all kind of like dead silent. And then he kind of felt, you know, us being like, really? Like strawberries? Like mm-hmm. that's where, come on, dude. But yeah, no, <laughs> dude, I, I've been there. Like I've been, you know, where I like kind of want to lock myself in the room and the only way my wife could get me out is to be like, hey, do you want to go to In-N-Out? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, okay. But you're absolutely right. I, if, if, if you were coaching me on a fat loss journey right now and you said, hey, dude, you know what? You're doing great. Have at it. Go to, because there's a really good place. Uh, it's called Pizza Bell. I could walk to it from my house. Some days when I'm on a walk, mm. I can actually smell it. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude. It's it's incredible pizza. It's mm. in Elk Grove. So if you guys are there, you guys need to go. What's it called? Pizza Bell. Pizza Bell. I mean, it's from your family. <laughs> <Yeah>. So... <laughs> But if you said, I didn't want people to know I want it. Yeah. But if you said like, Hey, do you go fucking go have whatever you want? I would be like, I don't want to right now at, at some other point. Sure. I, I'll definitely take you up on that mm. offer. But like, it, it is such a weird thing because I, I know what that sounds like. I know like mm-hmm. I I've been offered donuts, cake, like homemade shit. And I'm just like, I'm out. Like, I don't, I have zero interest in that right now because it is so against what I, what I'm like striving for right now and again i know what that sounds like it sounds fucking crazy um so there's there's two things i want to i want to uh hit right now but we'll we'll start with like the first one being like somebody that has a sweet tooth Mm. um because i i i've i've heard that recently where it's like i I do pretty good you know i eat a lot of a lot of steak carbs are pretty Mm -hmm. low but man when it comes to the sweets like eight o'clock at night eight thirty that's when I, that's when the gremlins come out and I start mm-hmm. eating everything in sight that's sweet. And again, going back to the mental side of things, I'm like, it, it doesn't taste as good as I feel the next day, mm. you know, and, and we can get very, um, uh, I guess maybe shallow or I can't think of the term, but be like, oh, abs always feel better than, mm. you know, than the mm-hmm. M&Ms or whatever it may be. But um, it, it's tough because I'm like, dude, you couldn't pay me to eat that right now. Like I'm getting so close to where I want to be. Like there's nothing going to stop me right mm-hmm. now. But for somebody that's not there, it's like, well, hmm, like I'll just go this route. So yeah, uh, what's the difference? I've always been fat. I might as well just go for it. What can people do to fight off that fucking sweet tooth? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> that little, it, uh, it's frustrating. Because I'm like, it's not that good anyways. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's really tough, you know, if somebody has been. Um, if somebody's been, if somebody's had poor nutrition for a really long time, they have what I call gas station taste buds. Mm-hmm. And those taste buds are, they're open to like weird concoctions of things that have been made by like 7 Eleven, Taco mm-hmm. Bell, and these things. And we think that those things are good and we think those things taste good. And they might, I don't know, we can argue back and forth on what tastes good and what doesn't mm-hmm. taste good. Obviously, you know, uh, you get like a, a uh, milkshake from like in and out burger it's fucking really good. Right. Um, so I think one of the first things you have to do is you have to kind of have a time period where you retrain your taste buds for a little while. It, it's not only your taste buds, but it's your, um, it's like everything that's connected to your, to your body, your brain, your chemistry of your mind, uh, the chemistry of the brain rather. Um, again, dopamine, like all these receptors, one of the things that's interesting about food is that if you're like, man, I really want a donut. When you eat a donut, it fucking works. <laughs> it works great. Mm-hmm. Again, it's a little bit like sex. <laughs> you know, okay, that was about exactly what I was looking for. I'm, I'm good for a little <laughs> while now, right? <laughs> but with food, it's tough because it doesn't really, again, it's like a mirage. It doesn't really work that way. It's like not powerful enough. It doesn't, um, it doesn't last long enough. Maybe there's people that can eat like half a donut or one donut, um, but I'm not one of them. I'm like, oh, what's that donut taste oh, yeah. like? What's that thing? You know, what's that thing about? So it's been helpful for me to recognize it doesn't matter how much of this I eat. I could probably eat this all day and I would eat it until my stomach just hurt really bad. Like I don't know any better, um, but I'm never going to be really actually satisfied from it. Mm-hmm. I do like the taste. <clears throat> I do like the flavor. But if you can kind of try to think about it, like how long does this last? It's like it lasts just a couple seconds or a couple minutes. So I think the trick here with anybody that's trying to get away from being addicted to anything, 
um, or anyone that is just really like maybe not even addicted, but really stuck on certain things, we have to present people alternatives. And the problem here is that sometimes people get upset about the alternatives. <laughs> You know, if I tell you like, oh, eat some fruit, like it just sounds like you're like, man, you're a crazy diet person. It's like offensive. <laughs> I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat some fruit, you know, instead of eating, you know, uh, a uh, thing of Ben and Jerry's and some cookies, like get mm -hmm. out of here. Like mm -hmm. it's not even, they're not related at all, but you can hit some of those receptors of sweetness with like, I just had a steak shake right here with, um, uh, I had a steak shake with our chocolate hydration in it. It was mm. fucking awesome. I just I just shook it up in the shaker cup, mixed it with some water, and it was fucking awesome. Now, the other thing is, is like you give yourself some hydration. You just filled your stomach up with X amount of uh, water, probably uh, like 20 ounces or something like that of water. Mm -hmm. I'm getting hydration, which is supposed to help with your cravings and things like that too, uh, via like the salt and stuff like that that's in there. And I also just got like 30 grams of protein. So I think that we need like alternatives and we need alternatives that are, that are good. Um, I've talked many times about like the fruit bowl stuff that I make. Um, I've seen people take like even the steak shake, the chocolate steak shake and put it into, uh, put it into some yogurt, like find a yogurt that you like the taste of, find a yogurt that's not loaded with a bunch of sugar. There are some out there right now. Uh, there's one company called like triple zero. It's not the name of the company, but the mm -hmm. thing is called triple zero. They make flavored ones. Those are a little tart. Like they don't, they're not, they're not amazing. I don't think, but fuck man, it's 17 grams of protein and like this little tiny thing of it. Mm -hmm. And it has no carbs and uh, no this and no that. Um, sometimes I'll get like a uh, full fat Greek yogurt and sometimes I'll buy the lactose free one. Sometimes too much lactose can bother my stomach. And uh, because it has the fat in there, it pulls away that kind of pungent taste of yogurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. What is it? Eikos or something yeah. like that? Yeah, Oikos. O Oikos. I mean, they, they've they've done like a lot of commercials like for the NFL and stuff. So yeah. like they are very known and they're everywhere. They have these mm -hmm. in every grocery store. It's not one of those like yeah. deep cuts where you got to go to the fucking mm -hmm. Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah, it's not some raw, organic, or right. whatever thing. This is everywhere. It's everywhere. It's predominantly protein. So again, I realize that this is not a tub of Ben and Jerry's, but this is a great alternative. Legendary Foods, if you can bring up some stuff from them, they make great, they have great products. Legendary Foods has their tasty pastry. They have their um, sweet roll. Sweet roll. The sweet roll is fucking great. Now, look, you that can get yourself so in the same compromising position with these things as well because they mimic uh, some of the junk food that we love. But you can see on the screen here, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see some of the stuff that we're pulling up. These are all really good options. And, you know, something that I do uh, pretty often, I eat dark chocolate probably, I don't know, probably four or five times a week. I'll have some dark chocolate of some kind. I, I get it from, a, a, I think the company's called Hue. It's just H-U. And um, that stuff's amazing. And they have ones that don't have like a lot of sugar in them. Um, they have a lot of different kinds. They have, my favorite ones are, it's uh, chocolate covered cashews. Now look, how, how much chocolate covered cashews can you eat? Like not that many because they're loaded with a lot of calories. Mm -hmm. But again, this is like, it's something that tastes really good. It's got kind of a salty and sweet component to it. Um, it doesn't have a lot of sugar. There's some fiber in there, but it does have a lot of calories because some of the calories are coming from fat. And so you need to be like, you know, you need to be cautious with it. Like you're trying to fucking lose weight. Like, I'm sorry, you're going to lose weight. You're going to lose some food. Like there's going to be some foods you got to depart with. Like that's the whole battle. Um, but I think right there, just a quick list of a couple things that we just gave you that I think are decent options. Protein shakes are a great option. Just keep trying different protein shakes until you find something that you land on that you like. Quest Nutrition makes a lot of great products, a lot of great bars. Oh, yeah. They have a lot of new shit, and it's like a Target. It's all over the place. They have Quest Pizza. They got, you know, the um, there's another company called Real Foods. See if mm -hmm. you can bring that up. Um. 
they sent me a bunch of stuff recently. Hopefully, we can get them to be a sponsor on our podcast. Yeah, they make like pizza and shit like that, right? Yeah, they make like uh, uh, enchiladas and like all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of options out there. Some of these things, some of these things come with a price tag, and I totally understand that. Um, that that's not accessible to everybody. But let's also be honest. You know, most of the people that complain about their budget have the same phone as I do <laughs> and they use DoorDash more than I do. And it's like, man, well invest your money into some different shit so you can be healthier. Quest even makes chips. I mean, they make all kinds of stuff. Yeah. That, that Quest pizza. I, I mean, again, like I used to like frozen pizza was like dinner every mm -hmm. night. Um, it tastes just like Red Baron frozen oh, yeah. pizza. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever had that, that's what the Quest one tastes like, except the Quest one has shit ton of fiber and protein in it. Right. Um, it's, it, it'll kind of get you if you eat too many, because I, I think I've eaten two whole pizzas in right, one right. sitting, and Ron Penna just kind of looked at me with his eyes open. He's like, in one sitting? I'm like, yes. And he's like, oh. oh. <laughs> like, kind of thinking like, Oh, we weren't making them for that reason. You know, right, I'm like, right. dude, it's too good. You know, so again, like what you were saying, like mm -hmm. you got to be careful with even the uh, the the better alternatives sometimes can go against you because you, 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 they're making them really good now. It's been it's yeah. never been like a better time to kind of go down this path. There's I think. Yeah, there's no there's no free lunch. They say right. So, <laughs> um, you, you're not going to be able to get these things without like a cost. Like a, they might cost you a bunch of money, and b, they might disrupt your stomach if you eat too much of them so you have to kind of pay attention to how much you eat but also you need to like again you're trying to lose weight that has to be at the front of your mind that has to be something that you think about kind of all day every day since the pressure is there from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed and when it comes to some of these kind of alternative foods I, why my suggestion would be cook something with it i know kind of the whole point so you just like microwave something but cook up a couple eggs or cook up a steak and eat that first mm -hmm. and then enjoy that. That way you don't have to, you know, A, a plow through something that costs a lot of money in 10 seconds and B, you don't have to eat more than one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was one of my recommendations for one of my friends was just like, Hey, like you can look at like Greg Doucette or a couple of other people, uh, Remington James. I'm like, check out their YouTube channel. Like they make a bunch of stuff. I'm like, be careful mm -hmm. though. It could hurt your stomach because it's like a lot of high right. protein, low fat stuff. I'm like, but almost everything's on the table as long as you make it right. because then you're going to, it's going to kind of slow things down. You're not just going to go, go get a dozen donuts and then plow through those. Mm. Um, so the, the other part of that initial question was kind of like, wh why do you think people fail? And it, it's of my opinion that they say they want to go on a fat loss phase um, but then it's like, oh, but the sweets are too good. I, mm. I want that. So I'm like, I, I think it's just more of like a like a, a mental thing, right? Like they kind of don't actually want it mm. or maybe they don't want it as bad as they are saying they want it. Um, but I don't know. What do you think? Like wh what's what's one of the biggest reasons why somebody might even, you know, lay everything out. They might order food from like Stan Efforting, mm -hmm. you know, which vertical meals are freaking incredible too. They come in and they kind of, uh, they they get pushed to the back of the freezer, that mm. sort of thing. Why do you think people can't follow through? I think the main reason why people can't follow through is they're not in a compromising enough position and they don't care enough about it. They kind of think they do, but they don't. And I'm not really talking about like the guy or girl that's like trying to lose an extra 10 or something like that. Cause that's a different ball game for somebody that's trying to like look good for the beach or photo shoot or something like those are things that are just, there's just like an extra little level of difficulty to some of that. Mm -hmm. um, but for the general population, for people to lose like 20 pounds or for people to lose, I guess I'll word it this way, for people to lose about 10% of their body weight, all it requires, the only thing that it requires is that they don't give up. That's all it requires. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. No one's asking you to do anything miraculous. You don't have to lose 100 pounds in... in uh, in 10, 10 months or something like that, you know, um, it, you, you don't like if someone was to weigh, let's say someone weighed, uh, 300 pounds, right? Someone that's 300 pounds for them to lose 10% of their body weight, which there's a lot of research that shows that a lot of your, uh, markers for all co cause mortality, um, you know, a lot of your blood work and a lot of these things improve a ton by losing 10% of your body weight. 
So that's 30 pounds. Okay. That's a lot. I'm not going to fight you on that. That's, that's a, a lot. That's a, that's a lot of work. Um, but we see people lose 30 pounds in sometimes just a handful of months, you know, six months, eight months. Sometimes maybe it takes somebody longer versus another person, but to lose 10% of your body weight, I don't think it's that ridiculous of a thing. I, I think it's a, uh, it's a great place to start. If you're able to lose 10%, I would imagine that would be encouraging and you'd probably be like, you know what? Now I'm 270. You know what? I want to see what it'd be like if I was under, I haven't been under 250 since I was in high school or something. Somebody might say, right? It's like, fuck man. Well, that's a great goal. And they keep, they keep working towards it. And they keep working on it. But yeah, the, the thing that uh, haunts everybody is, uh, is just giving up. You know, if you, if you give up on it and then you're reinforcing, you gave up on a diet before, you know, otherwise you wouldn't be on a diet now. Mm. You gave up on it probably multiple times, probably not your first time thinking about it. And it hurts and there's a lot of things trapped in there. There are a lot of people, um, in my experience, that need a therapist more so than they need a diet. And that's something to really consider. Do you have got some trauma from when you were young? Were you abused? Were you neglected, sexually abused, neglected? Like, I don't, man, I don't know. I don't know how you make it in this world if that's the case. Like I always tell everybody, I grew up complete unfair advantage. Grew up with two great parents that were there for me, encouraging me, loving me, hugging me, kissing me. Um, you know, prop maybe too much. You know, maybe they maybe mm -hmm. they did that too much, but they filled me with love and they filled me with confidence. And so that makes everything else in life a little easier. Uh, maybe somebody else, like my mom's case, uh, she, you know, she was heavy and her dad called her fat. You know, it's like, man, I don't, fuck, I don't know what that's like. I don't know how to, you know, now we're not even really talking about food anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we are talking about food, but we're like not like there's, there's so many other things at play here that are, that are just way more complicated. So anybody that has, I mean, there are things to explore mental health wise uh, looking into some sort of therapy. I mean, nowadays you can do like online therapy. It can be kind of anonymous, which is probably probably kind of a cool place to start. Like that's where I would probably start because I would feel like, I don't know, man, I'm going to go meet this guy and talk to him and like sit on the couch type of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it looks like and seems weird. Like maybe what if what if I see someone I know when I'm coming out of the <laughs> office kind of thing? Like, <laughs> ah, it's not what you think. Like I'm not really that crazy, but I kind of, but I don't, you know. I kind of am. Yeah. Like, what if the guy <laughs> or girl that I'm seeing is going to recognize me? And Yeah, and, yeah. It's like, oh, I heard you're showing religion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, and you're like, oh, man. Just walk right back out. <laughs> the walking in, the walking out. So there are, there are these, you know, outside the box things that we probably don't think about when we think about nutrition, um, but having relationships that aren't good and uh, having a, a, war, a job that's stressful, um, all these things, they're contributors. And I think if you can start to honestly ask yourself some questions, if you can kind of zoom out a bunch and look down and be like, why do I have this behavior? You know, why am I behaving this way on this day? Why, like, we do this a lot with uh, our temper, right? fuck, man, that's weird. Why am I being short with my wife? Or why am I mad about her doing this or her saying that? Or like, what, what the fuck is that? We examine that a lot, but we don't really ask ourselves like, why when I'm in a group of people and I'm at a party, do I feel the need to like constantly be drinking something or and or eating? And I think about stuff probably too much, but I, I think when you hold that blue or red cup at a party, like the drinking cup, it's like a little shield between you and the other person. So you don't have to get too personal. Like you have this thing right here and you're like, yep, I'm here. Same reason as you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, you're either doing that or you're fucking scarfing something down. And so like, hopefully I don't have to really talk to somebody too much. You know, I'm yeah. just be over here. Fucking that's, that's what I do. I know this cause this is what I do. That's so true. No, I, I feel you on that I'm one. Like, man, I'm getting thirds. Like normally, okay. <laughs> normally I eat a lot, but damn, like I've, I'm eating again. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to mention that earlier when you're talking about like ordering like a smaller amount of food because mm. like I, this, I do this all the time. Like I impress the whole table with what I eat. You know, it's like, wait, what the hell? You know, cause it's, it's probably the first or last meal that I'm going to have of two meals that day. Mm. So it's like, yeah, I can have 
three plates here because it's you know it's all going to the same place right. but <clears throat> there's that too right like you mm-hmm. know you can go the other way and you can i've said this before you if you it's something at a restaurant that you like that mm-hmm. is pretty healthy for you order two of them mm-hmm. and then yeah get get one for a to-go box you'll have that tomorrow you'll be actually pumped to mm-hmm. eat that the next day you know some this is a whole nother topic that we need to talk about i know but, there's so many things i've written down but motherfuckers <laughs> hate leftovers uh, I, I, I'm one of them, but people hate leftovers going with it. Yeah. People hate leftovers. I use them all the time. Yeah. I cooked up, uh, I cooked, so I got this from John Anderson. I cooked up this giant thing of fucking egg whites and I keep reusing it. I just keep throwing it in other stuff. I already cooked them up. They're already ready to go. I'll throw it in with some ground beef. You don't even notice them. Are they it's, like scrambled or what do you mean? Yeah. You yeah. Them? Just, just egg whites. I just cook them. Uh-huh. I just pour them in a pan. They come as a liquid. Yeah, yeah. I just cook them, and then I, you know, eat some when I cook them. But I put the rest in like a thing of Tupperware in the fridge, and now they're just ready to go. I can add it to anything. And people are like egg whites are you? I'm telling you, dude, you don't even notice mm-hmm. it, and it just it adds a lot of a uh, lot, lot of protein mm-hmm. to your to your food. But I'll do that with a lot of other stuff. So if I cooked up, let's say I made some ground beef. Like this is one of my go tos. I do ground beef. And I'll do some sort of uh, like tomato sauce type thing. Um, I'll pour a little bit of the pork and good uh, <laughs> pork rind stuff in there. Um, and then I have this awesome protein meal. And if I don't finish that, I put the rest of it in the, in the Tupperware in the fridge. And then let's say the next day I'm cooking up some steak. I'll just cut the steak up and, and throw <laughs> it in with the, uh, with the leftovers right there. So I think... People, people, number one, they have to eat at home. You, you have to make some sort of, you have to make some sort of decision that you're going to really take control of all this and you're going to take control of it yourself. You're not asking anybody else to do anything else for you. And I know that there's meal, uh, meal prep companies and I know there's all this stuff and those are good places to get to. And those are good things to explore and to utilize here and there, maybe to have on hand in case you didn't prep anything. But I really think it it all starts in the kitchen and you have to start to make the choice to, you have to be prepared every day. You, you, I think it's really, really critical. We don't know what the fuck they're giving you at a restaurant. I've been behind the scenes at some restaurants before. I've seen how much oil and stuff they use. You, you, the calories that you're eating, it's probably difficult to get through a normal kind of bigger person, workout person kind of meal and not have it be at least a thousand calories when you go out to Easily, eat. Easily, yeah. If not being more like 1,500 or right, something, you yeah. know? Yeah, I was thinking upwards of like 2,000. We consider butter and then, you know, like steak and potatoes, but then mm-hmm. like, no, I'm going to have some vegetables that are caked in oil and butter. It's like, dude, that's all going to add up. It's a lot. Do you reheat the <clears throat> the egg whites or yeah. do you just like mm-hmm. throw them in? okay yeah i mean so like i might let's let's say again that example of the ground beef uh, with the tomato sauce or something i'll put the i don't like the microwave i'm a little weird about the mic i don't mm-hmm. know i just think like cancer shit's going on with the yeah, microwave it's doing something weird yeah, so I'll, you, yeah. i do i do use it but uh-huh. like i use it sparingly i'll use it with my my rice every once in a while or mm-hmm. something but uh, yeah, so I'll I'll uh, cook the ground <clears throat> beef. I'll like reheat it in a pan, and then I just throw the egg whites in there with it. And again, the egg whites are already cooked because mm-hmm. if I tried to throw them in there and they're not cooked, then it's like it's weird. That would be yeah, it would be weird and it would be gross. But mm-hmm. you can do that with any protein. You can do that like if you cooked up, um, cooked up a decent amount of like chicken breast or chicken thigh, chop it up, keep it in the fridge, and just dump it into other shit that you eat later on in the week. Mm-hmm. Maybe that like works for me because I'm like just used to like eating this like hodgepodge of stuff. Yeah. Because I'm white and my mom used to <laughs> always like, my mom would just like take a bunch of stuff and just throw it in the oven. Mm-hmm. It's like a bunch of meat and vegetables. Casseroles. And, yeah. Casseroles all day long. <laughs> yeah. Casseroles yeah. definitely. Uh, I think that's a white thing. I've never yeah. had casseroles until I went to like a, a white friend's house and I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. But like, this is what you guys eat. But like, you guys are so <clears> weird. <throat> growing up, you know, we didn't, you know, weren't the, like the richest family. So my mom would make, you know, like some kind of ground beef something Monday, the leftovers would be put into tacos, you know, on yeah. Tuesday. And like, it just would kind of go like that for That's the rest the of the week. And it just kept going. So maybe your mom knows what's up. Yeah. Well, so my, but my problem with leftovers is like, let's say it's, uh, we make spaghetti. And so we have the ground beef set aside. I can taste this, the the ground beef being kind of old. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't, maybe that's just me, but with like chicken or leaner stuff, 
I'm okay with. So mm-hmm. like a rotisserie chicken, mm-hmm. like I fucking eat that all week. Um, or if I cook chicken breast, I can, I'm good with that. Right. But well, it's good to know. Just stick with what you know. Yeah. You Cause know, like with steak yeah. or anything like that, I'm like, nah, I'm out. Like I can't do it. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder, yeah. I wonder like, uh, you know, if you chopped it up and got it pretty hot or like, let's say, Let's say you had some leftover Piedmontese steak in your mm-hmm. fridge, which why would anybody have leftover? It's, it's not going to happen. Piedmontese steak. <laughs> um, but again, you chop it up and uh, make a scramble out of it. Throw it in some eggs. You might, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it might, this might be enough. Uh, it might have disoriented the whole thing so mm-hmm. much that you don't even like recognize it. Yeah. Just throw bacon grease on everything. I do that too. Yeah. I know. I got that from you. But uh, I wanted to say that, like, yeah, the um, the times where I was the most unhealthiest, I happened to also be the most unhappiest. Mm. And I think maybe... Sh- unhappiest. I think that's a shirt. Unhappiest. <laughs> it needs to be a shirt. <laughs> With my face on a it. A picture of you in, in your hoodie. <laughs> Yeah, like walking like around like it's Lord. freezing outside. <laughs> Dude, it's cold right now, right? But yeah, so I mean, and, and I could have been in, yeah, I was in terrible shape, but like striving to get into really good shape, I thought was going to make me happy. But it's like, I had a lot of other shit that I had to clear up mm. before I could even start to, you know, go to go on this side of right. things. So I think, yeah, um, like exploring other things outside of just the physical the calories in, calories out, I think is like something that should be, like I said, explored and, you know, go from there. But yeah, dude, I have a couple of other things, but I don't know, man, that was really good already. Yeah. I think, uh, I think, you know, we, we shouldn't neglect the fact that there is, you know, you can count calories. I know we mentioned it on the previous show, um, but counting calories is really effective. And if you've been really stuck and you don't know what to do, mm-hmm. Um, you can multiply your body weight by somewhere between like 10 and 12. And that's like a decent start, uh, for a caloric deficit. And you can literally just kind of count your calories for a while. It, it does work and it can work. And there's thousands upon thousands of people that have, that have used it. Um, now, you know, are the calories like that accurate and stuff? Probably mm-hmm. they're, they're not, I don't mm-hmm. think they are. But it's accurate enough to, um, it's kind of like, you know, when you go and get your, when you step on some of those electronic impedance things that does your body fat. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, if you're in SEMA, it's not going to tell you that you're 45% body fat. Right. It might be inaccurate, but it's like not going to be, you know what I mean? Still going to, still going to work. Same thing with like a heart rate monitor, like wearing an actual heart rate monitor. Yes, it gives you like the real time heart rate. It's probably the most accurate way we can do it. But your watch works too. Okay, there might be off 10 beats here and there. How much does it really matter? The calories in, calories out type of thing is something that people have utilized forever. <clears throat> I don't use it because I'm more into just food choices. And I think the food choices take care of the calorie counting and the calorie tracking. Mm-hmm. So for me, I don't necessarily have to track it or write it down and stuff, but I am tracking it. You're always tracking it. That's something I didn't realize years ago when I would bash some of the stuff that I saw from people that were tracking their macros and calories and stuff. And I was like, nah, you know what? If I'm being honest, I'm tracking it all the time. I'm looking at the size of the food, the type of the food. What's the composition of this food? How much fat is in there? Oh, that's uh, 80% um, lean ground beef. Nah, I had bacon this morning. Like I shouldn't mm-hmm. eat that probably, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or maybe tomorrow I'll eat leaner meats and stuff. So you're always kind of tracking no matter what you do. Yeah, and I like the way you put it uh, before, which is like you're not tracking every little tiny thing. You're just jumping on the scale yourself. You're not right. weighing all the food. You're weighing yourself to track like everything as a whole all at once. Right. And I, I thought that was huge because like I've been doing the same thing. Uh, I'm not jumping on the scale as often. Mm-hmm. Um not for any reason other than I'm, I'm kind of understanding like, okay, look in the mirror. All right. I should be about, you know, 181, 180 right now. And then it's so like today I jumped on the scale and that's exactly where I was. So, um, I, I, I agree. I, I had a lot of su- success weighing my food, tracking my food and doing all that. And it, it, it took a lot of the guesswork out because mm-hmm. I could kind of pre-program my meals for the day and I knew exactly where I would be. But I still would run into the issues of like, well, I have a little bit of room. I can play here and there. And it just, it never works out because I would fill my stomach up with bullshit instead Mm. of real food. Because that's really what happens. You know, it's processed processed food and it's not the whole foods that we mentioned on the previous uh, episode uh, of this topic. And it just like, yeah, it, it just, it. 
it cost me time, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it set me set me further back instead of you know where I was trying to head towards right. my goals. People that want to try to stick all this together, you know, keep in mind like we're huge proponents of weight training, like resistance training is where it's at. Um, Andrew and Seema and myself, all three of us have had better physiques <clears throat> year after year after year after year. Okay, yeah, I did a bodybuilding show and Seema's done a bodybuilding show and Andrew did like photo shoot and stuff. And there might have been times where we, you know, just dialed it in for a split second and got like leaner or whatever. But overall, all three of us are not, not only um, in better in better shape uh, from an aesthetics standpoint, um, but we all are more athletic, oh, which yeah. is kind of crazy with Encima because he's <laughs> already a mutant. Um, but you know, I think that I think that's no- noteworthy. Like the stuff that we share on the show, we're doing it all the time. We're actually practicing it. We're actually utilizing it. We're the go to stuff and stuff comes and goes and you get fired up about this thing. And then you kind of forget about that thing, but I'm doing a lot of that stuff. Um, people we've had on the show before, whether it's Kelly Sturette or Dr. Baker or, um, or Lane Norton, like I'm still utilizing all of it. Like Lane Norton's fucking voice pops in my head. <laughs> sometimes when I'm about to eat something or Greg Doucette, if you can imagine that it makes you want to jump out a window. <laughs> <laughs> Both then, of them yelling at you. Yeah, yeah at the same time. Yeah, well, I don't, what the? Leave me the fuck alone, you guys. And then you know, same with like Sean Baker and stuff. And I'm like, actually, yesterday I didn't eat any carbs. I'm like, today I'm just gonna pretty much eat meat. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just went through the day because I didn't have to run. So I was like, I'm just gonna just do this. So you can incorporate a lot of these different methods and techniques wherever you feel is appropriate. And you can take little things from people and you start to kind of plug it into your lifestyle. Say, oh, Mark Bell said, I'm supposed to eat, um, I'm supposed to eat my leftovers. And you can try it and say, eh, I don't like that. Like, that's not for me. I'm going to have to figure out something different. And so go ahead and figure out something different. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I think in the next episode, uh, we will talk about fasting, which we were supposed to talk a lot about mm-hmm. today <laughs> in this one, but we will save it for another one. Uh, so you guys can enjoy more uh, nutrition tips from us. <clears throat> a good way, I think, to kind of start out if you're really lost and not sure, you know, what to do or where to go with your diet in particular, start to read some food labels. Uh, I would also recognize that uh, the best foods for us, they a lot of times will barely even have a food label. Mm. So like going to the butcher, for example, it's like right, there's no yeah. label on that. Um, obviously there's labels on any of the meats that are packaged. Um, but <clears throat> I don't think you can go wrong with, um, I don't think you can go wrong with eating meat, vegetables, and fruit and putting that on repeat things that start to go outside of that. Once you get into like dairy and cheese and milk and stuff, you can have all those things, but it's, those are things you're going to have to just maybe be cautious with because again, you might find yourself overeating them. Like how easy is it to use way too much cheese? And you just took your meal that had eight grams of fat and now you just doubled it to 16. And if you use even like two, two slices of cheese, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we're, we're already at, and that's not the end of the world to have that, but it's just uh, from a caloric perspective, it's just a lot of energy that you're taking in. I think another good perspective, and this has been my perspective, has changed a lot with running how much energy do you really need? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Are you trying to go to the moon? <laughs> <clears throat> like, where are you trying to get yourself to? Um, you don't You don't always need this giant surplus of extra food. And I think that's been kind of plugged into my head as an athlete for so long. And it is important that you do get your nutrition in. But I would say for most people, they could end up with one gram per pound of body weight with protein. And they could probably do the same thing with their carbohydrates and that, which is, would be considered like a low carb thing for a lot of people or modest amount of carbs. And then you maybe cut that about in half for your fat, or maybe it would be 75% of that for fat. So if you're a 200 pound person, 200 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbohydrates, and yeah, maybe like a hundred grams of fat, something like that. And again, 
you're going to have to like manipulate that and play with that a little bit and, and, and screw with it a bit, but that should get you to where you want to be. And then again, 10 to 12 times your body weight. If you're looking to try to count your calories and track, read those food labels and take a fucking pen and like literally just for a couple of days, just like write some stuff down. And then what you can do <clears throat> when you have a meal where you're like, that meal is 500 calories. And I really like that. Mm-hmm. Circle that fucking mm-hmm. thing and say, you know what? This is my go-to. I'm sure you have go-to meal. Anyone has been doing this for a long time. They got their go-to thing that they can either whip up in like five minutes, eight minutes, or 15 minutes. Like mm-hmm. you got a bunch of different things that you can kind of put together in a pretty fast manner. Uh, so you can make this stuff um, a little easier to do. That is like legit as fuck too. So if you have that 500 calorie meal, you, it's just sort of like you're uh, like you have a get out of jail card. Like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I'm hungry. Uh, uh, I don't know what to do. I know this one's 500 calories. I'm just going to go there. Like you just, just start making it before you even can think, right? Like yep. that's that's the way to go. Um, but uh, damn it, what I, ha- I was going to ask you something else. It's gone. So it's gone forever. <laughs> pull, up, uh, <clears throat> pull up John Instagram. John, John, pull up John Anderson's Instagram for a second. <clears throat> Our buddy Deep Cheeks, John Anderson. <laughs> He's been killing it on social media. And I'm so happy. I'm so proud proud of him. It's just really neat to see uh, that he's getting some good growth. And he had he had a stinger the other day. He had one that really hit. And uh, if you scroll down a bit, listen to this, everybody. <laughs> for people that don't know John Anderson, you're in for a treat. This is a convenient way to buy stuff that's kind of inexpensive. And then he also tells you how to kind of like uh, alter it yourself. Save some money. 10 pounds of shitty beef, let's be honest. $2.60 a pound. Here's what you do. You take this thing, you're going to put it into a pot, put some water in there, bring it to a boil. All the water and the fat, you're going to drain away from the beef. You'll be left with just beef because all of the toxicity in the shitty beef is in the fat. (laughs) Then you're going to put it into a mixing bowl and you'll basically reconstitute the dry ground beef with an olive oil or an avocado oil (laughs) and you're going to basically have yourself some good beef you went from a shitty beef high in fat boiled it with the water drained it out reconstituted with a good fat now you've got a high quality Mm. product for a fraction of the price dang guys a goddamn genius john anderson uh pro former pro bodybuilder pro uh Strongman athlete. He's got a lot of great information and tips that he's just rolling with. And he shows you a bunch of ways to make uh, shakes and a bunch of stuff. A lot of the stuff he makes looks absolutely disgusting, but <laughs> a lot of these things, you know, I make up similar things sometimes and they actually do taste pretty good. He's making a cold brew coffee with uh, some egg whites in there. <laughs> but not just some egg whites. Yeah, though. yeah. He poured in, yeah, a whole giant. Look at, like, I'm like, dude. He's the best. Look at that. Oh man. Well, and here's a guy who's been doing it for a long time. He doesn't really eat carbs either. Mm -hmm. He just mainly just is, you know, eating tons of protein all the time. So anyway, there's a lot of great resources out there that you can also check out. Mm -hmm. Andrew, take us on out of here. Absolutely. So thank you everybody for checking out uh, all the Saturday school episodes as well as all the power project episodes. But um, the feedback has been awesome. So thank you guys. Please keep that up. Please keep smashing that like button and subscribe if you guys are not subscribed already. Uh, follow the podcast at MB Power Project all over the place. My Instagram is at I am Andrew Z and Seema is not here. I'm just used to saying that. He's at in Seema Inyang on Instagram and something something. He's, uh, he I don't know. Oh, he's beating somebody up again. Mm. But uh, links to all of us down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Mark Bale. Much props to Insema who's going to... Um I think a Pan Am, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I just got a notification from Flo just ah. explaining how it's like, yeah, it's, it's on this weekend. Like, oh. So we get to watch it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll be cool. watching. Yeah. I'm super pumped for him. I'm excited. I know he's been, he's been training hard. And I know regardless of what happens there, he's going to walk away with <clears throat> a lot more good lessons in his pocket and oh, yeah. a lot more weapons to continue to advance himself. He's a brown belt now. And uh, I asked Cassio, I was like, how long was he training with you? Cassio is uh, in Seema's mentor. And I said, how long was he training with you before you were like, yeah, this guy is going to be really tough to deal with and Mm -hmm. he's going to be, you know, a badass. He said, once he was there enough to where 
Cassio started to talk to him a little bit more and he recognized that it wasn't a hobby. Mm -hmm. He's like, I told him right then and there that he could be a world champion, a, a black belt world champion. And he said, and Seaman was like, yeah, I, I, that's what I want. I'd want to be a world champion. But he's like, I don't know about black belt. And Cassio was like, why not? Why not you? Mm. I think that's dope. I think that's fucking sick. Damn. And I think he's going to do it. In, in due time, you know, whenever that opportunity comes. Yeah. He's not there yet, but. Yeah, and I mean, Cassio, dude, he, I mean, he, he, we had him on the podcast, but like he spawned so many like awesome schools. So like the school that I go to got his black belt from oh, Cassio. Cool. So like we're like a sister school, but I mean, of all, of all people though, like he's, he, he would know, you know what I mean? Cassio would know when he, when he's like, he's not, he's not going to bullshit you. Know? Right. Put it that way. Yeah. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye.